Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Dave Lee from Dave Lee's English, and we're on the final stretch to hit the finale. We're putting everything we've learned together about pronunciation, intonation, reduction, linking, and a few other things, putting them all together and personalizing them just for you so you can have a conversation uh, with a native English speaker and understand and be understood. So please give a like, share, turn on your notifications, uh, and subscribe because uh, we have a little bit more left and it's going to be the most important and the best part. So let's get into it. Okay, we're on this part of the dialogue now uh, where uh, the first thing we did was go over a dialogue and this was the dialogue and I'm going to do this word for word uh, breaking it down one word at a time, uh, how you would see a dictionary or Google Translate or something like that pronounce these words. Gringo, hello, my name is John. So tell me about yourself. You. Hi, John. I'm, and then a blank for your name. It's nice to meet you. Okay, when all the words are separate like that, nice and neat, but it doesn't sound nice and neat when you're speaking. It sounds very choppy. It sounds not very native-like. So now let's get it more native-like and put you in the picture, put you in the, the driver's seat. So the word, oh, first of all, I'll tell you what, we have all of these different colorful markings and I've used them but just in case uh, you're not fully aware of what they mean, I wanted to go over them as well. The green is a syllable tonica, the, the emphasized syllable of a word. Uh, and it can be just a regular word in the sentence, or it could be uh, something more important. But I just underlined with green uh, the strong syllables in a word, like the word gringo. Gringo is the same in English and Portuguese. We emphasize the first syllable. Uh, so it's gringo, gringo. Now, the red ones that you saw on this page and you see here as well, these, I, I've decided to call them the syllaba supertonica, the really strong syllables. These are the ones that not only uh, affect the intonation of the word, they uh, uh, affect the intonation of the entire sentence, the rhythm of the whole sentence. Why? Because any syllable tonica, any uh, emphasized syllable is going to be probably be longer. It's going to be louder and it can be higher in pitch. So this is what makes the American intonation, uh, the American rhythm sound like it is. It all uh, starts with intonation. Uh, so, that's why I have been emphasizing this from the very beginning, the intonation. And then we also have uh, linking and reduction, everything that's in blue, because if you put the intonation, the linking, the reduction all together with pronunciation, you're going to sound very native-like, and that's what we want. So, the gringo says, hello, my name is John. You would say it like this. Hello, my name is John. Hello, my name is John. So let's break that down a little. First of all, hello is a funny word. I haven't really thought about this before, uh, but usually the second syllable is emphasized, but sometimes the first syllable is emphasized. It's a word where either syllable could be the syllable tonica, uh, the strong syllable. So that's why I put little green uh, broken lines under here. But in this case, it's hello. That's probably how he would greet you for the first time. My name, and notice anytime, uh, you remember if E is at the end of a word with more than one vowel, uh, then you will probably not pronounce the E. You almost never pronounce E at the end of a word in English, unless it's a word like me or the that only has one vowel, the vowel E itself. Here comes the metro. Uh, and then the word name 
connects to the word is, remember in linking, if a word ends with a consonant and the next word begins with a vowel, it's like uh, the consonant wants to jump over and join the next word. So instead of my name is John, he will say my nay, Ms. Nay, Ms. My name is John. My name is John. And so let me say this sentence one more time. Hello, my name is John. That's it. So tell me about yourself. Now, honestly, hopefully, if you get into a conversation with uh, an American, he won't say, hello, my name is John. So tell me about yourself. You know, he may put a little more conversation in between there, but I'm trying to shorten this up so we can get to the heart of the, of the matter. So here's how this goes. So tell me about yourself. And these two words here, this one ends with a T and begins with a Y. You know how sometimes words uh, back to back, one followed by the other can produce a Y or a W sound? Or well, really, sometimes they will also produce a TH sound if it's a T followed uh, by a Y sound. So about yourself, about yourself. It just happens naturally. You don't have to try to make this sound. Uh, you'll just say, so tell me about yourself. You hear the ch, tell me about yourself. And uh, that's in normal speech. Now, if this is the first time someone is meeting you or you are meeting someone, you may want to be a little more formal, uh, a little more reserved. And so you may actually hear the person say, so tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself with that stop T where the T sort of stops and then is followed immediately by the next word. So it could be, so tell me about yourself or it could be, tell me about yourself. You hear the subtle difference about yourself, about yourself. Either one is fine. And then you respond by saying, hi, John, I'm, and your name. Uh, hopefully your name is not Vogal M. Uh, so when did I put this? Well, remember, uh, in, again, in linking, we talked about if a word ends with a consonant uh, and the next word begins with a vowel, then the consonant will jump over. Like, say, for instance, your name is Amanda. Well, instead of saying, I'm Amanda, sounds kind of choppy, you will basically say, I, Mamanda, I, Mamanda, which sounds really weird when you say it like that, but when you say it at normal speed, it's, I'm Amanda, I'm Amanda, or uh, I'm Andre, I'm Andre. And by the same token, we talked about how if a, one word ends with a letter and the next word begins with the same letter, then you basically eliminate one of the letters, like I'm Marcio, it's going to, you're going to say more like, I, Marcio, I, Marcio, I, Marcio. It just makes it sound easier. It's a subtle difference, but it does make you sound more native. And so you say, hi, John, I'm, then whatever your name is. And if you're like me, you know, just a consonant, I'm Dave. Nothing very special about uh, the linking there. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. So we have nice with uh, the E at the end, which the E is almost always silent at the end. And it indicates that this is going to be a long vowel, by the way. Nice, name, long I, long A. And then the word to is almost always reduced to T. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And here we have that CH or TCH appearing again. Meet you. Meet you. Uh, so meet you and again being the first time you're speaking to someone you may be a little more reserved and you may say it's nice to meet you it's nice to meet you and do that stop t meet you or you could just go ahead and say it's nice to meet you so little subtle things like that that's what makes the difference between a native sounding fluent speaker and a not so native sounding fluent speaker we want you to be not just fluent but sound more native. It'll make you uh, 
easier to understand and it'll make the native speakers easier to understand you. So let's go over this whole little part uh, one more time. Gringo says, hello, my name is John. So tell me about yourself. You respond, hi, John, I'm Dave. It's nice to meet you. That's it. Uh, that's our lesson for today. We're going to get into uh, more of the things tomorrow. In fact, it's going to be the start of my favorite part where we start with my story. And I'm going to turn my story into your story. I want you to be able to use this to speak to a native uh, to answer one of the hardest questions anyone can ask you. So tell me about yourself. We're going to figure out how to do that in the next few lessons. So thanks for watching. Until next time, God bless you, and we'll see you again.